Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. Hearthstone standard rotation is quickly approaching and I've been telling in my rotation videos that Zoo is a deck archetype that will always survive because of the strength of the Warlock hero power and that ability to keep drawing cards. And to prove that concept, I actually went ahead and built this deck. This is a Rastakhan era rotation proof Zoo. So this deck doesn't use any cards that are going to rotate out of standard format in a couple of weeks and you can even play this in Rise of Shadows if you wish. Although you probably want to include some cards from the new expansion like Evil Genius for example is looking really really good for this type of deck. But anyway, it's a rotation proof mech Zoo perfectly capable of climbing to Legend already now in Rastakhan and I expect that it will be able to do quite well in the upcoming expansion as well. This is not a budget deck as such, there are two legendary cards in the deck, there is the Solarium and there is Ziliax, both of course are incredibly powerful cards that you may want to craft anyway, even now though the new expansion is coming. And there's also a pair of epics because there's a pair of sea giants in this deck. But then again, sea giant is always a good card if ever there are any kinds of token decks. So this is still a deck that you might want to craft even now. The most popular zoos right now are these heal zoos, but they will lose almost everything in the rotation. So this one is built around Grim Rally. And this one is built around Grim Rally and mechs. And the deck is really trying to abuse the mech death rattles as much as possible. There's stuff like Mecharu, there's Harvest Golem, there's Replicating Menace. So you play a lot of mechs, there's Explodinator, you play a lot of mechs, you get some mechs on the board, some of them may die, but some of them still leave something behind, and you often are in a position where you have some kind of mech token on board. And then you can abuse that mech token by using Replicating Menace on that mech token, which in turn can be used to push damage or it can be used to trade, and that will give even more minions on the board, and those more minions on the board mean that you will have easier time to play some sea giants. And also when you often have some kind of mech token on the board, you are able to use war gear for each, and just make pretty big mechs out of those small tokens. There are also some other token synergies in the deck, there is Scarab Egg, so you're able to get tokens from that. Knife Juggler is happy when tokens are being popped. Diewolf Alpha allows you to use these things. And of course the Grim Rally to buff up your board. So we're all just tokens here, tokens there, death rattles, hard to get rid of, and then magnetic stuff comes in, sea giants come in. That's kind of the idea of this deck. There are two deck slots in the deck. There is the Acidic Swamp, Ooze and the Spellbreaker currently. And these of course depend on the meta. I have found that one weapon removal, one silence is pretty okay right now. I've also considered running double silence, no weapon removal, but so far I've been content with this build. Overall, it's a fun little deck to play. It's also very capable. I actually had 66% win rate while playing this deck. So if you want to play something a little bit different, something that survives the rotation and you want to hit Legend, then you can do it all with this one. As for the mulligans with this deck, it's the typical Zoo-ish mulligan. Flame Imp, Mecharu, Voidwalker, Diewolf Alpha, Juggler, Scarab Egg if you have Diewolf Alpha or some way to activate it, but not really without. We're just looking for a strong curve so that you can play stuff immediately and get on the board and get to work. If you enjoy this content then please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more. And now let's go take a look at Mechtsu in action. Maybe. So after the rotation there will be no access to stuff like Fungalmancer. So that's why War Gear is basically the buff card. And Explodinator into War Gear, for example, goes nicely on curve. Explodinator into Fungal Mancer is better. But this is what I've got. No two drop. Tough. No three drop either. Is my curve too expensive? I don't really have that many expensive cards in the deck though.
The deck is mostly one and two drops. I just couldn't draw any of them, even though I mulliganed all the cards. I won't miss Fungham answer. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think many people will. You belong to the now. Mm, box slushing that. Okay, well, I have this silence coming up, you know. A little bit later. But I could replicate onto this in order to kill the box slusher. Then I have a bunch of small tokens on the board. Is that even worth it? Because the other alternative is to play the Explodinator. Box slusher will kill this next turn. Might kill something else too. I guess the Explodinator is stronger. Let's just Explodinate. Truth will no longer be found in death. I suppose, yeah. Ooh, it's a 5 room Phoenix. He didn't even want to play the big one yet. Fine, fine. Too bad the replicating mana is even on a Goblin Bomb. I mean, it can kill kill something like the Phoenix, but it will still die. I kind of don't, haven't found the place to commit my Grim Rally yet. I'm magnetizing a little bit over here. Killing off that fellow. Getting a few more minions on this board. I could use the Grim Rally this turn. I think I can use a Grim Rally this turn. Just clear the clear clean up this board. Be a bunch of two twos behind. Then if he wants to play that big Tar Creeper, I have a silence for it. So I don't really mind. There's the big guy. And the Taunt Totem. Do you want to play Knife Juggler Spellbreaker? Well, Juggler is always going to be killed through some means. But I do want to silence the Tar Creeper here. And juggler is probably still a fine gamble here. Just silence that one. Kill this one. These ones are going face. I should have killed that first. I missed one chuckle there. A little bit sloppy. The shaman deck doesn't really have AoE, right? Until Hagata. So you can kill individual things. There's, there's Hagata and Kalimos. That can kill big things. So he's at 20 and I have 10 on board. Plus 5. I can do 15. I mean, if I can do 15, I should do 15, right? Hit him very hard. Hagatha can come in two turns. Can't come next turn yet. I think this is what I'm doing now. I'm just hitting him in the face with everything I've got. Put him down to 5. I have a Taunt Minion protecting my board a little bit. He can't play Hagata yet, he can't play Kalimos yet. This was the opening. Okay, well now this one can kill the Taunt. And with a little help. But he would still need a Taunt of his own, right? Or not? Can he survive with 5 mana? Or is the Mechtsu victorious? He could have a Hex. He could totally have a Hex. Oh, he has that fellow. I need Solarium. Can I find Soul Fire? Yeah, that's Soul Fire. So oh, that's lethal. Hit there. Hit there. So I'll fire that one away. Hit face. So I kind of want to have something better. I'm still going in with Flame Imp. Let's see about this one. Hunter kept two cards. Kept three cards actually. Oh no, 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 no. He has lots of stuff. So, 
Candle Shot. A bit of a surprise, but a powerful card nonetheless. Might get the juggler out there, but doesn't look good. Let's see. He has a couple of cards that he kept. Spider Bomb. Okay, it's a Death Rattle Hunter. Alright. Well, my knife juggler is going to die regardless. So I have to tap here. Knife juggler will need to trade that one away. I guess I will play the Mecharu, but I don't think I can beat Death Rattle Hunter who kept three cards. That wasn't even one of those, so he definitely has Egg and Activator in hand. So that will be too much for me. I would need to pop the Egg. If I discard Ciliax, that's a disaster. Actually, even I can't even afford to pop the Egg, really. Oh dear, oh dear. Need to try to figure out something. Let's see. He didn't even keep an activator, he kept a spider bomb. Just draw the activator. And now, while I could just barely play a sea giant, there's a spider bomb on the board. If I Grim Rally my egg, this becomes a 2-2. Two, two. And there will be three extra min two extra minions on the board. If I kill this, then three of minions will die. So I will no longer have enough mana to play a sea giant. I think I have to risk it at this point. I need to get a sea giant on this board. And the way to do it is to play Grim Rally here. I can play Void Walker first. Void Walker Grim Rally. Allows me to play a sea giant, which allows me to play another sea giant, and then I can trade the spider bomb, and hopefully I will not lose a sea giant. And I don't lose sea giant, so I got two sea giants on this board. Okay. I thought that looked like the best play I was able to make in that position. Mech 2. Well, hello. This can be really scary. I'm scared in every game with this deck. It's an even paladin. Okay, even paladin is not as bad as sort of paladin. Because sort of paladin really hurts. Whenever Pally has this hero, they are odd. Haha! <laughs> Immediately proven wrong. <laughs> yes, it's a trap. Or what is he like going to coin out the hydrologist? He really wouldn't coin out an Amani Berserker into a flame imp. Flame imp just most true. Amani Berserker. Hello? But if he doesn't co use the coin, then I get board control. So it is a bit of a problem. Hydrologist would be the ideal card. He did keep three cards. What? In which universe is there a loot hoarder? Are they used loot hoarder in even Paladin? This makes life more difficult. Because I would like to play a knife juggler out there. He can simply trade. Huh. If he trades in the knife juggler, this one still can kill his two drops. Whereas knife juggler might not be able to do that. So I think I need to do it like this. Not waste three damage over there. Because now if he any two drops that he can play, like Amani, I can still kill them with this. Otherwise, there might be an Amani that I cannot answer on the board, and I would hate that. Obviously a bit of a weaker turn for me, but I can deal with the Amani at least. The next turn I can play the Explodinator, but now he gets a bit of an opening. So if that's like Consecration, that would be a big deal. Is he going to have Consecration? He might. Do I lose? Well, it's not an immediate loss still. I'll do this, but Consecration would be really, really strong at this point. Would you keep Consecration against the Warlock? Not really, no. 
He did keep a consecration against the warlock. Okay, I'm surprised. I think I want. I want to see X that one down now. I can magnetize more stuff on the Ziliax if it leaves, unless he has like True Silver Champion, which would be the best card for this position. He had the True Silver Champion, which is the best card for this position. I'm not. I'm never on a grind because I don't care about ranks. I just play whatever I want. He might have Valenir too, but I have to take away the True Silver Champion. So it's a tap, but it's an ooze. And it's a flame imp. Has to be flame imp. Not great, but we'll see. Has steed, will travel. I'm going to have to silence the steed, so if he also finds Valandir, that's going to become a huge problem for me. Do I need to tap this turn? No, I must develop the board. Your magic shall not save Silence the steed. Kill this one off. Play the dire wolf. So that I get a better chance to play Sea Giant next turn. Unless he has like second consecration. Or an Avenging Wrath. Avenging Wrath would also be strong. Of course, second steed, Valanir. Those are kinds of th things that kill me. I mean, can he really have those things? Oh, I guess the answer is yes. I need to get that sea giant on this board. Do I really sacrifice two minions just to kill the Silverhand recruit? Give him two six after that. What if I don't that he plays like Blessing of Kings on this? Makes it a 7-11. Sea Giant. It's in over here. Still has five health. Or I give up on my board. I'll wait. Let's see what happens. This is of course scary. Everything is scary. But at least this way I will have a bunch of minions on the board. So he could have like Tarim. Put your faith in the light. Yes, Tyrion. Tyrion is strong too, of course. And more sea giants. So I could do like Knife Juggler, Harvest Golem. Sea giant. Five mana. I guess I have to do something like that. Some apples on the head. Some harvest golem-ing. I popped the... I popped the divine shield, that's good. Or these two trading in Tyrion. I only have one more dagger coming. But I have to play the dagger first. Must destroy. If he has Tarim, I probably will just lose. Let's say these two trade into Tyrion. And this one kills the steed. So... Tarim is going to win the game. If there's a Tarim... But is there really a draw where there's two steeds, Tyrion and Tarim? I guess there is a draw like that. Potentially. All the defense matrixes, redemptions... That's a blessing of kings. It turns that into a 6, 10, then if it can be resurrected. And here's the problem, because that can also that can be auto defense matrix or redemption. In which case this should attack first. But that can also be noble sacrifice, in which case this should attack first. Well I have a sort of a grim rally way through this, but the sea giant is going to die. Must destroy. Should I tap? I should always tap. 
Hopefully it's not noble sacrifice. That's a little bit annoying, but just a little bit. Because I can do this and this and this in order to still kill it. So I can still get it out, out of here. I can have three held on these, so one minion attacking is not enough. He needs two minions attacking. But I don't have a lethal set up here. Oh no, he had a spellbreaker. Then I suppose he will win, because he can trade in the minions to the sea giant, and he can kill the two tree with the sword. Yeah. His draw was just a little bit too good. Still, it was a pretty decent game. I mean, he had a very strong opener, double Amanis, double Steeds, Tyrion. He had like everything, but I still made a good game out of it. But from here, it probably is not going to be possible to win. Nine, thirteen, fourteen damage. I mean, I need to do this and then tap. But over two turns, he can kill me. <laughs> Hi, Elijah. Berserk, yeah, I like Berserk midrange. It's a fun, fun one. Still has 9 mana and 4 cards, so I don't think there's an out. I'm ready to concede. I would need to top deck Solarium into a strong board. And he would. But he has, still has a bunch of cards here, so he should always have something. Yeah, this is RD's list. A bit old fashioned, but can get the job done. 7 damage. I'm dead to a Blessing of Kings. I'm dead to Valanir. So I might as well tap because there's no source of 2 damage. Well, there is Consecration. There's one source of 2 damage in the deck. Every other source of damage is going to deal more than 2. So I'll tap. And I'll play my mechs. Any use to play Grim Rally this turn? No, probably not. So, I die to a bunch of things. Choose of a champion, Blessing of Kings, and now also Consecration, because I tapped. <laughs> Mossy Horror was rather unexpected. Well, he didn't even need that he already top-decked the lethal. Well... Yeah, I don't see... I don't see myself beating Priest, but we're going to give it a try, of course. We're always giving it a try. Here we go, with the Flame Imp. So that he cannot play his Cleric out here, unless he also has Coin Powered Shield. The Priest kept one card... I would assume Wall Priest, but we'll see. Is someone injured? Does he really have the Coin? No, he's just feeding me the Cleric. Okay, I think I need to tap this turn. Instead of playing the Mecharu. I want to play me replicating menas on the Mecharu anyway. Mecharu and Ooze turn. Yeah, this is Mecharu and Ooze. And punch face. One more turn before he can coin Mass Hysteria. Obviously, you could play like a Dark Reaper here. No Dark Reaper, I like that. So this is the Replicating Menace turn. And then we just hit face a lot. Now he can coin Mass Hysteria, but it's still going to give me four 1-1s. One if he does that. Potentially, anyway.
goes to 21. I have 10 on board. He could have mass dispel. He can't coin Psychic Scream yet. I think I want to kill the Cleric. Let's play another Replicating Menace on that one. I kill the Cleric and I push 10 to face. This seems fine. Let's see what happens next. There could be a Witchwood Grizzly, it would be a 3-8. There's the Mass Hysteria. I have only 9 damage here. And my board is full so I can't play more stuff. Was this a mistake I mean, after all? Well, if I can Solarium into Soulfire then it's lethal. Or Grim Rally. So, can I find one of those? I can find the Grim Rally. This one hits there. Then it gets Grim Rallied. And then we win the game. I don't think Juggler is strong enough. Replicated Menace is nice, but I really need to find some early game first. Hunter kept his entire hand. That's always a bad sign. I hate when my opponents keep keeping their entire hands all the time. Two mana. What is Hunter going to do with two mana? I'm probably playing the Mekaru this turn. That gives me options with Knife Juggler. Why do you drop Sea Giant versus Hunter? I don't understand the question. What do you want me to do with the Sea Giant against Hunter? I mean, if I don't have board control, then Sea Giant is irrelevant. Hunter's not going to have a white board. We're going to fight for the board. If I spent the coin this turn, then I can't coin Replicating Minas next turn. I probably need to just do this here instead of using Juggler. This leaves me the option to coin Replicating Menace. So, some kind of Deathrattle Hunter or something. He kept three cards and he hasn't played a single one of those. That's what really worries me. Can't get the Sea Giant to be cheap enough. Juggler is pretty low value at the moment. I think this coin Replicating Menace and hit face. I'll just hit face. I'm still worried about the hunter keeping all the cards. Because that's so incredibly scary. There should be like Devil Sore Egg, Death Rattle Activator, Defender of Argus, or something like that in the hand. It could also be the Recruit Hunter. My shield for Argus. There is the Defender. Four mana. So this one has four minions inside. If I hit this one over there, that will be a plus two minions on the board. And that in turn means that the Sea Giant will cost four. And then I will play the Sea Giant. Then we'll see what happens next. I get those four minions out of there. We play the Sea Giant on the board and hit face. Like, if he has something like Spider Bombs, then the probability that Spider Bomb can hit the Sea Giant is really, really low right now. Obviously, the chance exists, and he could have like Hunter's Mark or something. He can have a Witchwood Grizzly, which would be a 3 9 at the moment. Still relatively easily killable with the Sea Giant. Spider Bomb is just never going to hit that Sea Well, not never. It can sometimes hit the Sea Giant if he has that. But I'm still wondering, he kept all the cards, so what is he doing? I suppose mid-range it will be a lot of minions on the board so I can play Giant early. I don't think it works like that at all. I don't think that's the way the matchup works. So do I play the Juggler and the Egg? Sea Giant will have to hit into the Witchwood Grizzly. Juggler Egg means that I can't tap. I could Harvest Golem and tap. Giant to 5, then I will have to kill the Defender of Argus. Juggler Egg gives me a better chance to... 
Juggler egg gives me a better chance to avoid unfortunate things. Like spider bombs. So, there's a full board. Difficult to hit anything good with spider bomb, for example, now. Sea giant still at 5 health. So it's not that easy to kill. Can't kill it with Ziliax. Let's see. He could like kill the egg, but that would serve no real purpose. Would gain reduce some value from the egg because my board is so full, but no real purpose served. Next turn I will need to tap. But I just wanted to get a, get a really good board so that Spider Bomb is unlikely to hit the giant. That was the main main thought I had going into this turn. That stuck Rexar is never a bad card. Now this can be flank killed with a flanking strike. Also I have no mechs on the board. I will need to tap. Now it cannot be killed with a flanking strike anymore. So it's harvest golem. This one goes in and gets Grim rallied. And then the rest of the stuff goes in. Punch him down to 10 and this out of reach of Ziliax or alternatively the flanking strike. Alright, next turn would be his power turn. He's trying to get to 8. That's his main, main thought here is how do I get to turn 8? And I'm trying to prevent him from getting there. Because there's two cards in his hand that he didn't, has not played, so I guess Katrina has to be there. If Katrina is not one of those two cards, then something is wrong. Spider Bomb. Okay. One in three. Lost. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.